No, no, no. <laughs> Mona goes, is that a drone? <laughs> that noise, it's a moped. <laughs> Put your phone on vibrate, yeah? Yeah. So was this lodge here before you came here, Mona? This lodge was here from long before. Let me see, let me know when you started recording, Hamza. Okay. So we're just going to go for it, right? We're just going to mould into it. Asif from Preston. Yeah. He says, Asha, mashallah, may Allah be all. I send him a whole lot of pictures. Yeah. He's involved in this. He says, it looks more difficult with the heat and wind. Oh, sad then. Well, man, be, <coughs> be natural, we're just going to go for it now as well, yeah? yeah? We're going to just, yeah. you know I mean? So, I'm here with Mana Ibrahim Patel of Leicester. And um, just Leicester all the way in Gambia. It's always interesting to know how someone reaches these parts of the world as well and their journey that takes them here. Because it's not always just instant. It's just, um, you know, every journey has an amount of time that's spent into it. So Mana. You know, I'm going to refer to you as Moana in this video as well, but um, tell, tell me um, um, a bit about um, what brings you, what brings you um, into, the, into the fold of the person you are. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, it was in 87, 88 when I was studying in, in Saharanpur. I was doing my final year in Saharanpur Madrasa. And... Uh, there was, I used to get my tiffin, my food from one more another. And budget was very limited. I was married at that time, one daughter, they were in England, and I was in India. And this Morana Usman, who was, who used to provide the food for me, I mean, I used to pay, uh, it, it was what you call it, a, a tiffin service, you know what I mean? Okay. A food service. He told me, he says, there's one Mias up here in, in the in the town, the wife passed away. He's sick, and he's sick, and he's got five daughters. He hasn't got any food in his house. So whatever little budget I had, I gave from there. So this is the journey of now, how the what you call it, the charity work started. Thereafter, Ramadan came, uh, Bakra it came. I, I from home I asked the family to send the Bakrayid money for Qurbanis and that, and we started the Qurbanis. And what year was this? This is 88, 87, uh, 87, 88. And you were... Uh, studying still that time. Studying, so yes. about 20? 20, 27. 27, 27, 28, yeah. 27, 28. Uh, 27, 28, yeah. And you were studying to, to do what? I'm finishing my Alim course. That was my last, final year of my Alim course. Okay. And how long is that Alim course and a half year's course? Uh, half year's in Alim, I was in India for 11 years. For 11 years? Yeah, from 76 November till yeah. 88. Uh, I think it was July, uh, July, August, that's when the final year piece. It's a long time, I can't remember that. You know. So that moment was that the click for you to begin? Click. When that uh, Miyasa, I think he had TV, TV school, couldn't work, five daughters, hardly any food at home, make money for meditation. So I had my little budget because I mean, I was studying, wife was in England with a daughter, so no other type of income. So whatever little income they used to, the money they used to send me, from that I allocated some for Miyasa. So time and time, every month I used to give a little bit towards you, to, to, to him. Okay, so every year as well? You, as no, you, ev only that year. <coughs> that was my final year. Okay. So I started giving every month whatever from my, my money, yeah, yeah. I was giving it to Miyasa. Okay. Because his wife had passed away, five young daughters. So it was a sad situation, you know what I mean, to see this year. So that's when, after I came back, uh, in 88, uh, I was coming back after Ramadan. Uh, so I told the wife, I said, listen, you got extra funds. Send it to me, I'm going to come by Umrah. So they made Mashwara. They said, 
that uh, why come to Umrah? We go for Hajj. And they respond to the Hajj. So my auntie, who's my mother-in-law, and my brother-in-law, he was a youngster, about 18, 18 years at the time, and the wife, they came for Hajj. And I came from India for Hajj. So Allah Pak made me do my Hajj in 88 also. So while you were studying, you were your, your wife was in, in Leicester in, in and you were, in, you were in the UK. Yeah, I yeah. mean, you were in India studying yeah, as well. Yeah. So, so even though that, that was a moment, okay, yeah. you know, what, what made you continue? What made you continue and look beyond just that situation? Well, that was one case only there. Yeah. But there are so many cases, you know what I mean, where I felt, you no, know, it's uh, obligation, it's uh, the thing, the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever you have, share it with the poor people. So uh, then after 88, when I came back home, then every year the Ramadan time comes, the family gives a circle. So it only started out from family and friends first. The Qurbani comes, collect all the Qurbani, send it off. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's how the journey started of this charity yeah. work. So, so the coming together of what you studied, the principles that were instilled exactly. in you, at the same time that situation to ignite it, yeah. at the same time, you know, how, how uh, you're brought up as well to yeah. share and everything, that yeah. all came together. And So yeah. what, what made you look beyond just UK and India? What made you think, okay, I need to now, I need to take this care and consideration, you know, to, you know, all the other places. And, you know, um, you know, mention what, what are those other places that you now it, taking that care and consideration uh, to? My, my auntie always says, he says, she says, it's the duas of, I think, my grandfather, because my grandfather was such a person. He had it in him that he always share with the poor. And my auntie says that back in India, <coughs> in the village, in Chaka, we were quite well off because they were the patels of the village. My great-grandfather had maybe over 200 or 300 windows of Zameen. But at my grandfather's place and my grandmother, only poor people used to come. You know what I mean? Anybody's poor, they want something, they came to them. And they used to come and stay, you know what I mean? Anything they mm. wanted. And same thing with my grand, my, from my mom's side. My nanima was such a lady that whatever grew in the, in, in, in the, in the, in, in, in the house, in the fields, rice, or in the garden, vegetables, and the others here, they always send it to the poor people of the village. Okay. So, <coughs> my, my auntie says this, this is, could be the dua of the great grand, my grandparents or something. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, my auntie gives a very, uh, she gives a story all the time. Uh, my grandfather was going to hospital in Osari. So she told, he, he told my auntie, if I make some food, I'm going to the hospital. I think there was some kind of a small minor operation or something. So uh, <coughs> they said that, Right, we make a couple of rotis. My grandfather said, no, 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 no. You can't make a couple of rotis. You have to make 30, 40 rotis. So my auntie said, 30, 40 rotis, you one person. Want to. <laughs> she said, but if I'm going to sit down to eat, there's going to be other people around there. There'll be maybe poor people. They won't have money. I've got to share with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you understand? Yeah. So I think my auntie always says, this is the dua from the grandparents. Hmm. You know what I mean? Okay, but they were very, what you call it, considerate of the yeah. poor people and helping the poor people also. So I think that's come down in the genes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so that's, that, I mean, that is something, because we the do... the biggest thing is the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. We cannot do anything without the tawfiq of Allah. And tawfiq meaning? Tawfiq means the, the thing, the, the guidance or the... Uh, the opportunity. Opportunity from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If yeah. Allah doesn't give it to you to share and do, to do any good, yeah. Nobody can make that you do that good there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if Allah wishes, the, a person got nothing, but yeah. he is destined for him just to do good. Yeah. He will do all that good, inshallah. Yeah. So, and, and you know, when, when you say you want to help people as well, there's a lot of different types of help. Help, yeah. Right? So, um, and, I, and, you know, spending the last couple of days with you and, you know, noticing there's, there's, there's helping people, you know, helping the kids, there's helping the elderly, there's also in within that spectrum as well, there's helping them in education, there's helping them in food, there's helping them in clothing. How do you decide what's more important or how, what is more important? You see, there is a different aspects in this here, yeah. different this 
And then as you go along, when you see the situation, then you feel that by now, uh, it doesn't just come in one time. After interacting with them and seeing the different, different situations, the different difficulties that people are going through, then you decide, okay, right, at this moment, you know, let's help them with uh, this thing, a quick fit. Yeah. That's a food distribution. Two weeks, three weeks, they got some food on the table. Now, my last trip in September, one widow was coming to the office in Brikama, and she's coming to Pa, and she's asking him, Pa is our coordinator here, that I got no food at home. You know what I mean? So first day she came, second day she came, third day she came, Pa said, well, listen, I haven't got it. And then I asked Pa, I said, why is this lady coming? She said, Bye. she's got four daughters, husband's passed away, she's got no food. So he gave her about four, five hundred dollars. So I said, take the number, I want to go see her house, where she stays. Hmm. So in most, in all these years of working in Gambia, I hardly went to people's houses, I just relied on their... Local what, knowledge. Local knowledge. Okay. But this time I've interacted more. I've been to quite a lot of widows' houses and see the situation with them. And after seeing the situation, there afterwards, then we analyze it. We sit down, we think over it, ponder over it, by what's best for this. So the sewing classes has come up with this. Okay, but there's a lot of girls who can't go to school. They haven't got the money because the schools, you have to pay fees for it. Mm. Now, government schools are not that good, they say. So they have to go to the private schools. Private schools, they have to pay maybe 30 pound a year, 40 pound a year, 50 pound a year. Oh, no. So we're not no. talking private school as in like yeah. where they're, where they're no, more private. wealthy. But it's, when you're talking private school, we're private still talking school. very poor, needy it's people. Poor, not needy we're people. not talking private. No, you're not it's private privileged. like our UK standards. Yeah. Okay. But it's just the local schools where it's more or less to run the, 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 the institute. Yeah. They're charging maybe what it, uh, I mean, in, uh, in the school, if they're paying, they're paying 30 pound a year. Yeah. You understand? So now it's the wages for the, because it's a private entity, they have to pay the wages for the school, they have to do maintenance of the school and all this kind of stuff. So they have to take fees. Mm. There's no other help from the government or something mm. or that. Mm. So they take the fees and that covers all the cost of the mm. school. So on this trip here, a lot of uh, young girls I've seen not going to school, then they go to different, different, uh, they get caught up in different vices and which is not good, you know what I mean? So I said, no, let's try to start with this. That's why in the Tori Gambia this time we put uh, uh, this thing, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, the courses to yeah. help the, ch the, 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 the children. Sewing classes, computer classes. For the boys, uh, we're thinking that if we can get put them into welding or into what you call it, building or something yeah. like that. So, so they got some kind of a skill and then they can earn some kind of money and they don't have to be dependent on anybody. Yeah. So <coughs> on this trip, this last trip, now for instance, I went to that, uh, that lady's house, four girls, one girl was not there, eight, 20, well, she must have been 20. So I, I, I persisted to tell me where that girl is and they were not telling me. This is in Gambia, yeah? This is in Brikama. In the, in the, Brikama, uh, the, yeah. the, the, the com combos they call is with Banjul, Serakunda, yeah. that's the main touristic area okay. and that's the main part of what you call it, that's a, the urban area. Yeah. We are now in the rural area, yeah. that's the urban area. That's the more developed part of it, that's where all the, the business and all the, what you call it, uh, eco uh, economy and all everything okay. happens in that area. Yeah. So I then caught on, okay, they're not telling me, I know what's the reason why they're not telling me. She left home, it's one and a half years, there's no contact with her. So I under this is what happens, is that those girls go to the tourist places and then they get caught up in all these type of vices. That's one. Second one, there were two, three girls when I was cleaning the warehouse and they came there, they're asking for, begging for something. So I say, what do you girls do? I started asking them. I think they were 13, 14, 15, and one of the eldest girls was about 17, 18. They say that, oh, we, fathers passed away and we don't have food and things like that. I say, where you stay? Give me the number. So I went to the house. When I went to the house, widow, eight children, one, two grandchildren, and then after asking them, okay, by, it was evening time, you're not going to have food? They say, no, we're not having food. I say, why? They say, well, we can't afford it. So I say, in a day, how many times do we eat? We have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. They say, no, we eat once in the afternoon, about two, three o'clock, and now the next day. Now that one child was only six years old. The small boy was six, the other one was eight, the other was nine. I put it on my WhatsApp, on my broadcast. Alhamdulillah, one very close friend of mine said, for one year, these two, three widows give them an allowance from my side. 
So we fill them up. We give them uh, 35 pounds a month so then they can have food. So you see, you have to look at the different situations. Where, achha, now those girls, some of the girls, they're not doing anything. Hmm. So we, instead of just giving them food every time, just, I thought, no, let's start them off with some kind of a business. So we, that's where the self-supporting project is coming in. Yeah. You see it when you was in Bangladesh, you were giving sewing machines, Bangla, uh, what you could, milking cows, yeah. rickshaws and that. So here also, so uh, we've taken a survey, we've asked the widows, what do you want to do? So some of them say that we're, we'll buy coal, they buy the big sacks of coal, and then they're putting them into small, small uh, kilo bags and they sell it. Some say we'll sell water, some say we'll buy vegetables, we go to the market, we'll sell vegetables. Some say we'll go to the, to the, to the port where they sell fish. We'll buy fish, we'll come to the market, we'll sell fish. So this is what we're going to so do. These, yeah, so these kind of projects, they make them last longer without the need, the need for... Yeah, it's like oh, the, the saying goes, give a person a, uh, the thing, a fish, he'll eat that fish, tomorrow he's going to beg again. Give the person a, what you're going to, a fishing rod, he's going to have fish on his table yeah. every day because he's got out fishing. Yeah, yeah. and that's, that leads to another important point as well. I mean, I noticed about... Um, you know, charities as well is that when when, when we give in, when we give clothes, they're sold off, and then the money is given to the poor. Yeah. Um, and that that kind of sell. Thank you. This is one of the great things because I want to want to talk about this brother here as well. Oh, he's a, yeah. a very amazing man, sir. For you. Yeah. So now let's just go back to the point you said. So you see how we determine. You see, education is very important. Yeah. Education is important. Now. We are 250 kilometers away from the capital, Banjul. You've seen how harsh the weather is in this area, yeah? Yeah. So, I'm not dissing any charity, but you'll find very few charities who go in, in up country yeah. and do the work. You came with me to Bangladesh, all the people are opening madrasas or schools in Dhaka. Where we went to Suramganj, where from Silat you have to go right into the, hmm. thing, the uh, another 80 kilometers. Then you've got a boat ride, then in the jungle there you're opening up. So these are the type of children who get de deprived. If they've got nobody in the, in the capital to where they can stay, they're not going to get educated. So that's why we've opened up the school here, so to educate and cater for these people of this area, yeah? the children of this area. So why is, why is education important though? I mean, um, I'm looking around and education is important. I'm not, I'm not this time, but I'm just trying to be, um, just trying to say the other side of it is, is education is more valued when you have education you're in the city because you're able to interact with those more um, 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 people and businesses where education can matter as well. Why is education important here? This is a stepping stone for them. If they don't get no basic education, how are they going to go to the upper level? So we've got till your grade nine. Now is, uh, we're thinking of going to grade 12. Okay. At the moment we got what, what does that mean in, in terms? Is it, is it very similar to? In, it's more or less English. Okay. You know, I mean, nursery, they got uh, kindergarten, nursery, grade one, grade two, grade three, grade four, till nine. Okay. Then it goes to grade twelve, where they do like the GSCs, yeah, yeah. our GSCs, and then they could go to uh, this in college and university. Yeah, yeah. So what happens is after uh, this in grade nine, if they've got the means, they'll go up country to Bangalore. Okay. If they've got some family, they'll stay with them, and then they got the money, they'll finish this in grade twelve, then they can go to college and university. And you get some kind of a education, you got a degree, you can get some kind of a job. Mm. But if you haven't got the education, then what are you going to do? And, and I guess as well, what's more important is when you give the education. Because you mentioned one of the stories is when you first came in 2005. Yeah. Okay. It took you almost something 14 like hours. 14 hours just to travel well, well, 100. 14 to 18 hours, I think. To so travel from, from just to Bendu. travel 100, 200 kilometers, basically. Two, no, 240 uh, because from Benjamin, from the from from Senegambia. Okay. So it's about 20 kilometers to the port. Yeah. Cross over the port. Yeah. The port crossing is also a couple of hours. Yeah. And then from the port coming down, but that time there was no what you call it, hard road. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. was only what you call it, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. bush road. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So these, these roads are these roads are recent. So now when you talk about the education side of it as well, with that road being made, it makes it more essential for these people to access four hours, the resources. Four yeah. hours are we there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean from here to Benjul, four hours you're there. Hmm. Before it was yeah. you know, taking uh, So So if we if we're talking about education as well, you know, um, Iman 
in you know the Islamic education, but the Islamic education, but also bringing that love for Islam and love for you know believing the Creator as well. Why is that important? If we were to separate education from that Imam now, as well, you see our our schools are Islamic schools, yeah, with some secular subjects inside. So we have maths, English, I think social studies, or they got about four subjects inside there. So if somebody afterwards wants to go into the secular system, he's got some kind of a background knowledge of of the education. Yeah. Islamic education is very important as a Muslim. As we being Muslims, that the Iman can save. You've seen all the fitness and the vices which are happening here, and what's the social media, and what's this uh, technology. You know, people get drifted away, and they think of a lot of different, different things, you know what I'm saying? A lot of them are looking for greener pastures, and they, what you call it, uh, danger their lives. So many of them die, they go from it to Libya, they get, what you call it, enslaved and they go into what you call it, uh, they get trafficked and things like this here. They, why they're passing the, what you call it, uh, from, from Libya to the thing, so many of them get drowned and things like this here. So if they've got some kind of what you call it, education, either Islamic education or sexual education. Islamic education as a Muslim, as Muslims being, is very important to give them to secure their Iman. So that's why our school is an Islamic school where we teach them Hadith, Quran, Fiqh and all these kind of things. They have a curriculum which is run under an uh, Islamic body here, yeah? Al-Amana, which all the schools throughout the whole country, that is the same curriculum. So if a child goes from this school, he can go to another school, he won't mess up anything, because why? Mm. The curriculum is the same. Yeah. And uh, Imani is our other thing, because this life, for us, this life is just temporary, eternal life is the year after. Yeah. You leave the world with dunya, with Iman, success for the year after. You've got no Iman, Allah knows best what's going to happen to you. Yeah, so yeah. that's why, uh, it's important we give the children education. So that's one aspect of it. That's why we've got now three schools here. And this is... In Gambia uh, only? Yeah, yeah, Gambia. Yeah. And uh, it's a long... Uh, educate, the thing, schools is not a short-term project, it's a long-term project. You have to sustain them. And this, So now we've got three schools, we've got nearly 70, 70 teachers on our payroll. So now, Alhamdulillah, we look at it this way here, get the 70 teachers, that is Sadaqa. So they're getting employment, they're getting their wages, at least they've got some kind of income to support their families. Do mm. you understand? So uh, in the pandemic, so many schools in this area which are what I call private, not private like ours in England which are big businesses. A private school, they're not getting any help from the government. So it's the local villages or the people of the village, they're running their school. But they, they, they depend on whatever little fees they come to pay the wages of the teachers and a little bit of maintenance yeah, of yeah. the school. So in the pandemic, so many schools closed down here and they could not pay the teachers' wages. Now, what are the wages? You're talking about 40 pounds, 50 pounds, 60 pounds is the wages. But Alhamdulillah, our school, and after the, while the pandemic also, we never stopped the wages. And we, why does the pandemic affect the schools here? In terms of, like, well, you know, it's so, so separate from, for, so, so separate from like, the, the business side of the country. No, but, but pandemic is the government puts the law that schools must close. Okay. Yeah. Whenever yeah. the pandemic happened, yeah, yeah, yeah. the government puts the law, okay, by the schools must close. If yeah. the schools got to close, the children can't come to school. The teachers need, still the need teacher, to earn money the and then go, go out somewhere now, else. So if you're a private entity, then you haven't got the funds, how are you going to pay the teachers? And you've got boarding schools here, so you can't really, you, you've got students that are boarding here, so you yeah. I guess you can't really close, so to well, speak. Well, we, we had to close the whole school because it's a government rule. Yeah, yeah, if you don't close it, they put up... They, they, but the children are still living here, right? No, no, no. no. They okay. go home. Okay. They have to go home. Yeah. What about the orphans? The orphans will go to their guardians. Okay. Whoever's looking, there, maybe the uncle, grandparents, whoever they are, they'll see. Yeah. So, so the other question I was going to say is, uh, Where else? Uh, while we're having an interview, can I just uh, tell the brothers what uh, they can do? Yes, go on. Yes. Then. Uh, uh, Khalil, 9 o'clock, if you can get the Aslam, uh, get Ustad Bajinka, and then you can start the distribution. He's got the whole list of the, the, the beneficiaries, and you guys can start the distribution. This looks good. Ustad Bajinka, get Ustad Bajinka, inshallah. And ask Mufti Muhammad also. Mufti Muhammad. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we've got a distribution. We've got a distribution today, a full yeah. distribution of uh, 500 beneficiaries. Uh, mostly old uh, widows, uh, poor ladies, and sick people. That is yeah. our target. And that's the zakat money that's going to be going to the zakat money. Uh, yeah. The people who donated all the zakat money, that is going to be inshallah donated out, uh, distributed out now inshallah. 
Okay, and that's going to be, that's going to be, so, so basically it was collected by the people that have joined you on this journey. We've got yeah. that and it's going, it's been packed by the people that have joined you on this journey. And collected all, the, yeah, a all the participants yeah. who joined us, and it'll be the funds they've raised, Alhamdulillah, with the same funds they've raised, we bought the food. I took my brother Khalil with me to go buy the food. He's seen it, we bought the food. And then the, the participants yesterday, Alhamdulillah, we had a bit of a relaxed day because we wasn't doing, there was no so much cycling yesterday. So then there at night till two o'clock, they packed all the parcels. Yeah. And now the distribution will start at nine o'clock, inshallah. Yeah, inshallah. So in terms of Caravan Mercy, what is your, where, where, where else is your presence? We, we in, uh, we're working in Liberia. We're working in Ghana. Then we're working in Cameroon. Cameroon in the camps, uh, no, uh, no, northern uh, Cameroon, at the tip, going towards the Central African Republic. There's, there's a lot of refugee camps. I mean, there was a conflict between Muslim Christians. So a lot of the Muslims have come into the, the scene. They're different to Chad, Niger, Sudan, no, Chad, Sudan, Cameroon, and Congo. And they're all in refugee camps. They're in the refugee camps from 2011. Caravan of Mercy has been going to Cameroon in those refugee camps from 2014. And every year we do a food distribution there in Ramadan. Now in the camps we've opened up this, for the last two years we've opened up the maktabs. So then the children, they have school there where they teach French. And then we've opened the Islamic side where they get the Islamic education. So we've got maktabs. There's over three in that camp. We work in Borgop camp, which is right near a place called Gaundre, my, my Ganga. Between Gaundre and my Ganga, if you Google it, you can find it. It's oh, 120 kilometers of the be, uh, be beaten track. You know, 120 kilometers inside. Well, right in the in the jungles, about 20, 20 25 kilometers from the uh, from the Central African Republic border. So Borgo Gap got fourteen thousand plus refugees. There's a gum camp. There's got about seven thousand plus refugees. So we have opened the maktabs up now. So we've got ten classes where a, a thousand children over two three shifts are getting taught, and we've opened up the hips class. Hundred children in the hips class now. Hmm. Which inshallah I'm going to make a trip. Uh, I haven't taken the dates out still, but I will send it on my broadcast that just before Ramadan so I can go and see the madrasa, uh, the, 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 the camp, do the Ramadan food distribution in advance so the people have food before the Ramadan yeah, yeah, yeah. and then see how I can restructure, better structure the madrasa, maybe open up more classes for so, more children. So how did you go, how did you go from, go, go all the way in there? What, what made you go there? What, was it somebody you know? Well, Somebody, I mean, in charity work, uh, you have to have a good thing of a partner. If you don't have good partners, unfortunately, the charity won't last long. This is third world, and it's poverty. You don't find good people. I mean, it's not only in Africa; it's everywhere. In England, you'll find that also. You'll find a lot of bogus people collecting. So it's yeah. everywhere. So here, Alhamdulillah, so far we've got. <coughs> We've got quite good partners, you know what I mean? Yeah. And we're on top of it. Oh, I visit the places every couple of months. I'll give you an example. In June, June, July, I was in Liberia and in, 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 in Ghana. In Ghana, we just started the water project, the borehole project. We were supposed to do a purification plant, but in 2020, uh, 20, when I visited that uh, purification plant, which was a model I wanted to build in one place called Cheraponi, right on the Togo border, but it was non-functional, so I thought, okay, because why, uh, lack of maintenance, not looking after the place, and you know, this, so I said, no, if I'm going to invest people's big money, 70, 80,000, I mean, it's, uh, I mean, uh, 70, 80,000 pounds in there, and if they don't look after it, it's going to be difficult, it's just going to go for a waste. Mind you, even if you put it up, and mm. it's been looked after good, but if 30,000, 20, 20 to 30,000 people are benefiting daily from water, 80,000 pounds is nothing. Yes. You know, so then yes. after, uh, there's a brother, Amin there, who's a lawyer there, a friend of mine. He runs uh, a, a, a very big organization in northern Ghana. He says, well, instead of the purification plant, let's put boreholes up. So the, I did the survey of the whole area again. Yeah. And then we started the borehole. So in, in part of the, the thing, Todi Gambia, the money we have raised, it's written that 20, uh, 25,000, 20,000, 25,000 for
for Northern Ghana boreholes. Yeah, we so discussed we, it was 20,000. Yeah. Yeah. And so we've already put up six from, yeah. so from July till now we put up six. I was going to go in January, uh, uh, December, was it November, December? Or November. We were supposed to go, I was four brothers were supposed to come with me, but we never got the, the visa on time for Ghana. So we cancelled the trip and we just came to Liberia. Mm. Then in November I was in Liberia again. And then the, the, the January I came to Gambia again for the store to Gambia. Yeah. So you have to be on top of it. It's, it's amazing how when, you are, when I talk to you, some of the things I think, think you know, it's like when I go to work, oh, I couldn't catch the bus yet, so I stayed at home and work. Whereas for you, it's like, um, I couldn't get the visa to go to Ghana, so I went to Liberia to help. I mean, it's just, we we're, were, we're completely in a different spectrum of, of thinking and everything as well. And I don't think you see that side of what you just said, right? And it's amazing, like, um, you know, you're, you're completely in that world. And, it, <clears throat> and yeah. do you ever get tired of it? Yeah, Sheikh, I think, I, I, my, my, this is my dua every day. Before I sleep, Ya Allah, until I'm living, I'm a sinful person, I don't have any good actions, but until I die, use me for the khidmat of your deen and for the khidmat of the creation. Mm. So this is my dua. Make, use me for the khidmat of your deen and use me for the khidmat, for the service, service of the deen and service of the creation. How I can help? I mean, I've been traveling from 95, I started traveling to Albania and then we started going to Kosovo also, but then after uh, after things got better th th in Albania and uh, Kosovo, because I mean there is other organisations working there, but I read a booklet about West Africa, and then I met Pa. It was a desire to work in Africa. I'm also from Africa. I'm from Zimbabwe, and we grew up in my dad had a shop in a small town, so we grew up. So I had a background on the poverty, the the the, the, the standard of the poverty in Africa. So. My, it just took my heart over and tried to expand. I mean, daily I receive requests from Tanzania, from Uganda, from Kenya. I was supposed to go in Kenya in December because there's a heavy drought there at the moment. But because of the pandemic, you know, things weren't very stable. So I don't want to get stuck, you know, many private. Yeah, I mean, those kind of things, I think I've thought about this many times as well. It's like, um, you, know, the, you know, I think in sometimes it's called opportunity cost, right? When you decide to, you can buy, you can buy this or and then the opportunity cost is you didn't buy that, yeah. right? I mean, in your in your in your space, I think you know you've got the experience, the knowledge, and the um, the the, the strong willed heart. I don't know how you do it, how to choose um, between spending the money that you've raised over here instead of over here, because when you don't spend over there, those people will. Some people may die, right? Yeah. Because you know. Um, Funds haven't reached them, charity work hasn't reached them, but you decide. How do you cope with that kind of like, how do you cope with that? Look, if I don't help these brothers over here, Achie, you know, how, do, how does anybody yeah, cope Achie, with that? Well, like, it is it's a difficult situation. You, the heart says, by let's go and help everybody. But we, the creation, we don't have that kind of strength. Allah is the one who, you know what I mean, who's put it there, he takes it away. So, I mean, for us is okay, where you can go and help, you know what I mean? But let's help those, you know, uh, help those people. Now, there's a difference in, in, in this charity work. There's a different, uh, what you call it, spectrum or different scenario in every situation. In a disaster zone, you've got a disaster happening. Around the, comes in the media, everybody goes. But they forget the people who are in countries where there's no disaster, but they're suffering. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You understand? So, for instance, the Rohingyas, when they got uh, persecuted and they got what you call it, uh, genocide happened in Burma, all the Muslims, were, uh, the, 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 the refugees were coming into Burma, Bangladesh, so all the charities went there. I, was, I don't say you mustn't go. I went myself three times there. And Alhamdulillah, we were so many organizations, we worked and we helped the people there, and we're still helping them in the Rohingyas. It's not that we're not helping them. But then, what happens is this place, which is not in the media, nobody comes and helps them. So that's what I, my, my thinking and my mentality is. Like, listen, we have to help those people, but not they forget these people who don't get no aid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You understand? These people, they, they're going through a disaster. Either it's a, a, a war zone or either there's some kind of a nat uh, natural disaster, a, a, a cyclone or a tsunami or this thing, floods. Thing like that. So that's now, they're going through the difficulty, so you need to help them there. 
But these people, because of poverty, it's a daily the thing for them. Day in and day out. Then after when the disaster finish, we all tend to forget these people. Well, I think, yeah, you're right. Maybe just probably you don't, but yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I... You know, for instance, like Cameroon, the Cameroon, uh, the, the thing, nobody ever goes there. The camp we're working in, because it's off the beaten track, actually 120 kilometers, and nobody, there's no other organization besides Caravan of Mercy. It's run by UN, United Nations, they've put the tents and everything up. But now, they're also not getting food. The UN have stopped giving them food. So whatever little food comes from Caravan of Mercy in Ramadan, and in Bakrai we do the Qurbanis there, and then in between the year we do a lot of uh, this thing. People give sadaqa, we do the uh, rice distribution. You know what I mean? Bags of rice. To so, the so you, so you, so that's why you're so hands-on, right? Because you have to be in touch with the person yeah. to be able to get the Qurbani done locally and transport it over there as well. Because what you're saying as well is, if you were to delegate that, it just wouldn't make it there. You, know, you have to, you cannot, you cannot be in every place and every, uh, every, you have to delegate. If, uh, if I'm hands on, wherever I go, so friends, we're here now, we're doing the distribution. But at the same time, we've got distribution, eye operations happening in Bangladesh. Right but now as well. At, at the moment, while we are here, there's 100 cataract, we've got 300 cataract operations to do. So the first batch of 100, which got delayed, it, it got delayed, it was supposed to be done after this thing, Ramadan. But because of the situation in Bangladesh, there was a lot of curfew because of the pandemic, you know what I mean, uh, things were all closed. So that's why it got delayed, delayed, delayed. But now things have opened up. So move to subjects organized. We got 100 cataract operations just happened day before yesterday, yesterday and today. Then the next one, I'll do it in March. Another 100 cataract operations. So there is, but Alhamdulillah, we've got a good team wherever we are. Hmm. We In India, I've got Mona Hafiz Rahman there. So, uh, He's a brilliant guy. He's got his team of six people, which are employed by Caravan of Mercy. Yeah, the six yeah, people, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we don't give them much. They've got the other jobs, but they as uh, whatever work Caravan of Mercy got to give, we, we give them a little bit of, uh, what you call it? Uh, yeah, supplement to the... A supplement to the other thing inside yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now then, Liberia also, we've got a group there. Then in Ghana also, we've got uh, a, a group there. If I'm not there, I start like the boreholes in, in July. I started off the two boreholes. Because I've got, we've got, got the machine, the thing that the company did the machine and they drilled it. But then after you rely on them to complete it. But then whenever I take a trip, then I'll go and visit them and go and see them. Okay, now the balls are finished, right? Let's do some more balls. So, inshallah, I'm going to invite you guys, I mean, especially who raise the money on this story, Gambia, as if you, Muhammad, uh, Khalil, or any brother wants to come. They come with me to Ghana and come see with your eyes. But listen, we collected this money, has. Molana done the work for us, so he hasn't done the work. Yeah. I want you to guys come and see it. Yeah. Okay, but listen, is it being done? Yeah. And as I said, I'm, I don't I don't shy away from showing anybody. I Like I showed Khalil, I say now this is the borehole we've done. This is the receipts we've got. This is the expenses we've done. This is the expense. Have a look at it. Yeah. So it's open to everybody to see what we're doing. Yeah. 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 And I think I think that's what's quite nice as well, the way you, the way you operate as well. I mean, um, the places we go, it's so like, you know, over here in Gambia, you, you allow the, the donors to be part of the journey in terms of you donate, you collect, you, 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 you pack the food parcels and then you distribute it as well. So it's not just about, because I do, I do sometimes, and I'm, I'm privileged in that way as well, that I'm able to just give, right? And it's very easy for me. Sometimes it's just a mobile app and transfer money, right? And then, you know, I'm, I'm, I feel good about it because I've, you know, I've given some. But in a, in a certain way, that is the very easiest, easiest thing to do, yeah. right? Obviously, you have to spend time to earn that money. So, we, you know, we all understand that as well. But to get that appreciation, right, um, of what it takes from time, health, and not just the wealth, yeah. I think you provide the opportunity to do that. No, Aki, this is, that's why I try to take as many people with me on the journey. But come and see what we're doing. Come and do it with your own hands. But if you collect the money, come and distribute it. Now here, Alhamdulillah, you have to give the brothers the opportunity to do it. First, it gives them more, what you call it, uh, uh, confidence. Yeah. Okay, but no, we collected this money, the food is bought. That's why I took Khalid with me to come and buy the food with me. But this is the prices, we negotiated the prices, he's there with me, we're negotiating. And we're buying the prices. But to see that no doesn't, this is what we've bought. 
Now the parcels also to get the youngsters which came here in, involved in it. But to see, this is nothing, this is something <coughs> back in UK. They know. I mean, uh, there is now a lot of uh, charities. We've started the homeless, and now they're interacting with this thing. So, so the youngsters here also, it gives them uh, this thing, confidence. It gives them a sense of, what you call it, uh, satisfaction. I collected the money from my family. I know the food is bought, here's the food. One of our guys who came on the trip because he went to buy the food, he bought the food, packed the parcels, and now they will just a bit of their own hands, inshallah. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. I, and, and I can't, you know, I can't, I can't um, thank Allah through you, you know, like to have these kind of opportunities as well, because being also just present in the room, and you, know, you talked about the cataract, and I remember that when we were in Bangladesh 20, 2011, I think it was. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> and I think that was when the first time we had a um, decision about, um, or um, the, the, the conversation about cataract is a problem in that particular area in Bangladesh. In, in, in Sulam Ganj, by, uh, no, by Mufti Nazarul Islam's place. Yeah. We went to go meet the doctors. Yeah, and yeah. All that, yeah. yeah so, so even though I did nothing to, no, for no, it, no. but just be part of that, in that room, okay. Well, I see, I see if you see now why, you know when you the first ask, question you asked, why do you choose this year, why do you choose that, why do you choose that? Now, for example, cataract operations. You got a child or, or some kind of eye deficiency, right? Now, if you got a, a person who is 40 years old or 50 years old and he's got a cataract, if you don't treat that cataract, he can go blind for life. He's dependent on somebody. Hmm. You understand? So now, that cataract operation is costing us 25 pounds, 30 pounds, right? So if you do the cataract operation, Alhamdulillah, it saves him from going blind and then he can still do something. Yes. So that, that's why now then you say then we sit down and we think right this cataract is open, uh, very important then we start advertising it so at the moment we as i said in bangladesh we've got 300 cataract, uh, cataract operations to be done we do them in west bengal uh, in gambia also we're going to uh, we've already spoken to the hospitals here so we're going to try to get uh, cataract operations done in in the gambia also mm. now in the gambia is a bit more expensive we've advertised 25 pound people have given 25 pound here is costing about 40 pound you understand? So, inshallah, that we will fulfill through our zakat fund or through the sadqa fund. Because these are eligible for zakat and they are eligible to take sadqa, so we will fulfill that. So, we want to try to do 100 cataract operations here in the, in, in the, in the Gambia also, inshallah. Inshallah. And I think, I think you know, I, I was, and one of the things I'd just like people to know about as well is when I was present in that, present in that room, I do remember um, I closed off my ears at one stage, all right? Um, because there was, a, there was a part of a conversation where you were having, where you had to decide, and this is where the toughness comes in, right? Where you had to decide um, um, who should be first in line, let's say. No, who should be, should it be the elders or should it be the youngsters, right? I don't want to go into the answers, but that was a tough, you know, it takes a, it takes, you know, it takes a certain amount of ill to say where it should go you know, um, strongness as well to say where it should go, and yeah, that was that was tough for me just to be sitting there as well. Well, is that the food distribution or the? No, no, in the in the cataract. No, there was there was a pot of money. Yeah. There was a there was a collection of people. That pot of money was not enough for all of them to have cataracts, so you had to select. Now you see, in that selection, what we do is how I would look at it. The elderly person who's 60, 70, he's passed his life already. You know what I mean? See, that, this is yeah. where I was closing my so eyes I, I, I would go for the young ones because they still got a life in front of them. Yeah. So if a child which has got, got an eye deficiency is only going to cost us £20 or £25 to operate him or to get something, medication for him, and he's got a big life in front of him, treat him yeah. first. Now, here also a lot of people ask, why do you say widows? Now, in the widows also, we differentiate. I tell our, uh, our partners, listen, when you choose widows, don't choose a widow who's 80 years old or 70 or is 5 years old because what she's, how she's going to do business or how she's going to, when we do the cow, distribution of cows, how she's going to look after the cow. We say, by get those young widows who are 25, 30, 35, 40, who've got 4 children, 6 children. Now they've got children to look after. So let's help them to help these children. The, 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 the widow who is 75, she might be having some siblings who are looking after already. Because the family looking after already. But this one which is young, she's going to go for handouts. Hmm. So you help them 
So then it's, you can Yeah. <coughs> and I think and I think that's where that's where one of that's where where you know the luxury part of the the thinking comes in my from the west side head right, which is basically I'll easily argue back to you, no everyone should get it. Yeah. But the problem is I'm not actually dealing with the problem. Yeah. You are dealing with the problem. So you have to actually segment it, right? You have to actually prioritize it. Well I'm just gonna sit here and say, no everyone should get it. Yeah. You know? So I appreciate on that side and that's where, where I where I'm privileged to be allowed to be or can choose to be ignorant a bit. Yeah, yeah. And it's sad to say that as well and you know I have been that person for a long 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 time on as well. The education side also we target the, the orphan children first, the very poor children who can't afford to go. Now in our school year, as I said, we're charging uh, the school, to, uh, I mean the government has uh, advised us because if there's donor fatigue in the West, these places will close down because there's no, there's no, uh, what you call it, help from the locals at all, financially. Hmm. So the kindergarten, grade one, they take four pounds a year. Now we say that if some poor lady or a poor man, he can't pay that four, four pound also, full of sponsorship for me. Yeah. We'll, it costs us maybe twenty-five pound a year per child to cover the wages, do a little bit of maintenance work, anything like this here. But we ask them to pay four pound a year, so it, to give them that little bit of value also. You know, sometimes they say what comes free, people don't value it. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You understand? Yeah. Like uh, I'll give you examples. Yeah. Sheikh Saadi Rahmatullah has written a, a small story in his book. They say a young man was one day cleaning his shoes with a beautiful, rare, you know, a scarf. He had a beautiful uh, kiswa, they call it, scarf. And he's cleaning his shoes. So an elderly person was passing by and saying, that such a beautiful scarf and you're cleaning your shoes. He said, you know these shoes? My sweat. This scarf, my dad gave me. So what comes in inheritance, there's no value for that. What comes with sweat, there's value for that. Mm -hmm. So it's to put a little bit of value in them. Keep by listen, you paint towards your child's education. Mm -hmm. Have that in you. But mm -hmm. if it's free, you're not going to value it. Mm -hmm. They'll come one day to school, two days they don't come. Two, one day they come, three days they don't come. But if you're paying for it, you're going to say, no, you have to go to school. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing. And so they also, we differentiate, because I know, listen, first orphan children, and then afterwards, what you call it, very poor children, or if somebody's sick, he can't work, he can't afford to see his, uh, his children pay for his school fees, no problem, bring them in. Mm. Those who can pay a little, pay that little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that money, in uh, our, uh, the thing, uh, 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 the thing, um, the program is, situation is, uh, if the money is collected in this school, yeah, it only stays in the school, it doesn't go anywhere else. You mean the, the, the subscription of money that the locals pay? Yeah, the locals, the children pay for yeah, the fees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Will stay in the school, doesn't yeah. go anywhere else. Yeah. What comes into uh, Serakundani will stay in Serakundani. Mm. What comes in Medina Mani stays in Medina Mani. Yeah. What money is distributed for Gambia only goes to Gambia. Yeah. What money is distributed for Liberia will only go to Liberia. Mm. What money is distributed for India or Bangladesh or any country will go to that country. It doesn't go to anywhere else. Yeah. Illa, mm -hmm. somebody says, by is open most needy. Mm. When they say open most needy, then we sit down, we say, right, where is the most needed for this year? And then we send the money. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, pulling it back to pulling it back to Gambia, where you've got you know free schools here now as well. You know, in Medina Mane, which is the smallest school. Where we see the first yeah, night. Yeah, the first night. Yeah. Um, then you've got um, Serakunda, which we're still going to go and see. We're going to see. Otomori. And then this is uh, that's 200 pupils. And then down here you've got um, 350 to 400 students here as well. Um, this is Kuntao. Um, so done that. Now. You've been bringing people here as well. Yeah. You've been taking people others to it for them to experience and and also hand deliver the money yeah. um, that that have been collected as well. But it's not bad as well. I mean, the the view people do get to see. I mean, I have to appreciate as well. Next, would I have ever sat here, appreciated Africa in this way? River Gambia. Right? Yeah, River Gambia. Um, you know, interact with the locals. 100, 100 stuff. meters away, from, not even 100 meters from our madrasa. Yeah, not 100 meters away from the madrasa as well. Where it's strange, such beauty, and then such lovely lessons, and you know, precious things happening there. You know, it really comes together because you've got orphans being taken care of, you've got widows being taken care of, food being distributed. You know, precious, you know, religious, um, um, you know, good deeds happening there as well. And then you've got the beauty of Allah's creation on this side as well. 
you know, bringing that together, coming and enjoying the company as well. It's amazing here as well. So in terms of, in terms of doing that as well, how did, how did the bike challenge come up? Come up? You see, uh, I, I, I seen on the website, there's a Plymouth Banjo Rally, which is coming, inshallah, in this. It's been postponed for the last two, three years because of the pandemic. Yeah. We were going to do it in 19. Yeah. But because of the pandemic, it got postponed. Yeah. But inshallah, this year, Allah give us life. We're still living. Yeah. In December, in the Christmas holiday, I already told my son, tell her to start looking at it. It's going to come onto the website. We've opened up a separate website from Caravan of Mercy, Caravan Challenges, hmm. which is a, private, uh, a separate entity. So uh, it's just for what you call it, administration of uh, reasons why we've opened this on separately. So it will be on there, inshallah. Uh, the Plymouth Banjul Rally is people have fun, the what you call it, uh, experience different cultures. Now, Asif, as you and your friends in London go on holiday every year, you tell me if you came to the Gambia. Do you think you would have experienced all this village life yourself? No, no. You wouldn't? No. So that's what I want to give the youngsters, especially my nephew here, who is sitting here, who is born in England, yeah. bred in England. So, them to experience the local village life. Experience the, the ten star toilet in the yeah. village. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the hole in the ground. The hole in the, this thing, the hole. Yeah. They don't mean. You don't even have to do the, you don't even have to use the flush. You know, that's no even flash, better. No flash needed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No water wasted. Yeah, yeah. You understand? So they experience all these kind of things. So it's good for them to experience these kind of stuff. But and interact with the children. Alhamdulillah, in the, in the first one, the Gambia is coming. He came in the first one also. And some of the pictures, I still see him sitting with all the children and mm. having such a nice time. Whenever I see his picture, I always make dua for him. Allah, mm. mashallah, look at it. You mm. know what I mean? Mm. And the children are hugging him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're around him, he's giving them sweets and all these kind of things. I saw it come in the picture, man, so people yeah, know who this is. Yeah, come on, come here, come here, come here. Yeah. Sure. Right, he's coming with the England top. He's not coming on to the, to the phone, but he's got a hurricane top on as well. Yeah. Which um, always makes me turn the phone away from him. Yeah, yeah that's it, you know what I mean? What's the guy? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this thing, so it's to give them first hand experience of Africa itself, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So that's why, right. Then after the funds are raised, uh, you should come here. Just a, uh, the people have arrived, yeah. queuing up, and they want to make a start so they can process okay. everyone. So they're asking, um, do you want to start? You, want to come no, you guys start started, does that matter? Okay, so just, okay. just give them a phone call and say, start, is there anything you want uh, to... Uh, 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 who's, uh, who's there from last? Aslam is there. Aslam Khalil uh, Mawa sitting uh, on the yeah. table. Uh, Bajinka's there. Bajinka's there. Bajinka's there, yeah, Bajinka's there and Ustad John is there. That's about 10 minutes. Yeah. And if Pa is there, Pa's ready, I can't see. Pa's just arrived as well, he's having So then they can start the distribution of becoming guests now, inshallah. I'll interrupt you again if, it, yeah. if they say anything. That's what you know. Yeah. So yeah, so, okay. So okay. You're, you're talking about the Plymouth to uh, Banjo. When you said you searched it, you, is that you searched it because people are doing it already? Or I don't you know how it came onto my decision. No, no. Uh, the first, uh, what you call it, uh, car we bought for Caravan Mercy, Pa bought it for what, from an auction. Yeah. So I asked him, what's this auction? He says people come from Europe, yeah. from Holland, and from, U uh, from UK, from Belgium, and they do the rally. It's not a race. Yeah, yeah, it's about it's getting there. Yeah, it's about, uh, and there's a lot of criteria to it. The car mustn't be worth more than 500 quid. And then experience, you're traveling five, 7,000 kilometers yeah. over four country, uh, seven countries. And it's, so you, it's like a holiday also. And it's an experience in life also. Coming through the, the Sahara Desert. You mm. went 550 kilometers through the Sahara Desert. Now, uh, I, so I went on the website and I checked it. And it's amazing stories. Some of some of these participants they came in in 1971. What you call it, Citroen? You know those old Citroens? Yeah. Huh? That old Citroen from England, 71 <laughs> Citroen made it to Gambia. Yeah. Through through the uh, Sahara Desert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I said, what they do there after is the cars are brought here. Then after the cars got to be donated to the charity, the charity sells it, and then the money which comes it helps to pro this is the project. Yeah. So this is where I came with the Tori Gambia. Now with Gambia, why I chose Gambia? is because it's not a very busy country. On the motorways are not busy. You see how many, every maybe five minutes or 10 minutes, you see a car passing by. So it's relatively safe. Gambia is a safe country also. Politically so I look safe at safety. Well. Yeah. I look at 
the road, the thing, what you call it, uh, conditions, uh, you know what I mean? And then the same, the, 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 the same conditions, uh, not the same conditions, conditions as such, okay, where the hospitality of the people. So then, on, in 18, I came, the uh, Indian Pai said, Pa, now we need to go down, and this is my program, I need to start. So I know the roads are good, you know what I mean? It's mostly tarred road. So there is a hill that's now part of a challenge. You know? <coughs> if there's no uh, what you call it, uh, it's not uh, a challenge, isn't it? Challenge, it did, yeah. No hills, there's no challenge. It's going to be plain sailing. I know that it's safe. To, that safety is here. In the first one, some of the guys at night time, uh, seven kilometers they went off the beaten track. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. there's nobody to mug. With no lights as well. No lights as well. Mugging is very less here. So the alhamdulillah. So the, you don't fear that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the village people are very hospitable. Whichever village we went to, they, they open. I, I, I had it in mind, I would buy tents. And we put up the tents in the, in, in the villages and we stay in the tents. But then when the village people say, no problem, you can use the schools. So then I put the other thing. But I'm going to buy the tents for the next one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, when we went to Joburg, we couldn't stay the night there. So if we can get the tents, by give the guy some kind of a, what you call it, uh, the camping this thing a little bit also. So you, you so you decided so by looking at the Banjo Rally, yeah. then you just said let's just do Gambia ride. and let's do a bike ride. Bike ride. And then how did you you started you started surveying the area? You started surveying oh, yeah. say, say from Banjo village to uh, village to village. Yeah. Well, um, by that at that time we had our own vehicle. The, the yeah, charity yeah, yeah. had its own vehicle, yeah, yeah, yeah. which we were using for food distribution, for what you call it. It was a pickup, a Mitsubishi yeah. pickup. Uh, we use it as an ambulance. We use it as a Two, three ladies gave birth in the, in the pickup. <laughs> yeah. You understand? Know in the we pickup, use it yeah. for janaza. We use it for, for janaza as nice. courting, what you call it, uh, uh, as, a, as a hearst. What do you call it, a hearst? Yeah, yeah. We use it for that. Then we use it for distribution of clothing, for all that kind of So it's multi purpose. Yeah. yeah. So last time we did raise funds for that. We haven't got a vehicle because the vehicle, uh, it, it, I mean, broke down. So maybe in the, in the, in the next one, or in this idea, in the interview, we can ask if we can donate towards that and we can use it. Yeah, uh, yeah. For a vehicle, we can get a vehicle. A vehicle so then, expensive here. Yeah. No, we we get it from. It's expensive here. Yeah, we bought. It, I bought the one from Germany. I went to Germany to buy it, and then we shipped it across in yeah. our container. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully the Banjo Rally will do um, later on this year at yeah, the end no, as well. In December. That's going to be in yeah. December. In yeah, yeah. So now we village to village. I, uh, we go, and then I take. Uh, I mean, from uh, the thing from Banjo from from Bara. Every village, how many kilometers? I start writing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So then, then after distance. writing all the type till here, then I make a survey. Then right now, how many? So the first one we had two sessions, morning, yeah. afternoon session. Yeah, yeah. This time we had one session. Yeah, we learned from. We, we learned, we learned that. So yeah. then, then you break it up where to have this year. Now, Alhamdulillah, this year in terms of organisation was much better. Reason being is the, uh, the support vehicles were there for the brothers. The heat is there. So every five kilometers the water was there for the brothers. Yeah, yeah. Maybe one day in between we, we ran out of a little bit of water, but we talked. No, but that makes a part of the challenge. And I, th I think we're learning as well. Yeah. And definitely compared to the first time, this one seems more like a challenge now because you're doing 60 kilometers in one go. In one go, yeah. And part of that is, you know, in lesser heat and then it's more heat and then it's got to... So I think you've definitely hit the point in terms of the challenge part of it as well yeah. in terms of the safety making it an experience for everybody you know keeping them in a safe as safe as you can be right because yeah. it's always dangerous riding on the road anyway yeah. regardless yeah. so i think that's that's amazing from that perspective as well and you're doing it a second time um are you going to are you going to look to do it again next year well uh, <coughs> uh, the i'm thinking of getting done doing one in december with the weather is not too bad it's quite cool and one in january due to two this year what? Bike rides? Two bike rides. Okay. December and January. Yeah. So because uh, we don't take to have two big groups because then yeah. it's very difficult to, to manage. Yeah. So if maximum we have 30 people on one group and we spread it over two groups. And uh, the madam, my, the home minister, she wanted to come, <laughs> but I know she can't take the seat. So I want to, on one of them, I want to bring ladies also. Yes. Ladies and children. Yeah. To bring them also so they can also experience yeah, you know I mean? but I'd definitely bring my kids, five yeah. and seven year old. Yeah, yes. no, we, I'm going to bring them. Now, if the ladies can't do bike, bike riding, they can do a 10 kilometer walk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We yeah. can get them to do a 10 kilometer walk yeah, or yeah. 15 kilometer walk. Yeah. So that's kind of, So they can, while they're walking, they see the villages and things. Uh, inshallah, I mean, this is the second time. 
Now the next time I'm going to make try to get it even better, organize it even better. Okay, we have I'll try to have a support vehicle, not not a, a, a truck with us, where we have the food with us. So we time it such that okay, when we're passing the villages, all the brothers stop. You see a lot of poor small, you know, I mean, uh, what they call them, crawls, uh, where you have t eight, ten huts there. Those, you see how those people, they live off the, 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 the land only, whatever co is cooked there. I've been to them and I've that seen them. That would be very, very and then, interesting experience. So then we experience. can distribute that food to these people on the way. So you have that truck with us, where you watch the parcels already made by five kilometers. But, but, but I have to make a survey on that. So next time when I come, I'll make a survey, right? 10 kilometers, this village here, all the bikers get there. By It will take us 10 minutes. So you have that 15, 20 minute water break. Yeah, you know hand I mean? out. At the same time, you do a hand out also. It's you similar know. to how we were noticing people, because what I do notice is a lot of kids are coming. They're, they're either asking for empty plastic bottles or they're asking for plastic a football. Ball. Yeah. Yeah. And I think handing out footballs along the journey, no. things like, these are things that we're learning. Then also the clothing. Yeah. So if we have the clothing, what else? You see, you see most of the clothing uh, children, they don't have clothing. So we can give that clothing out also before, you know, we have children's clothes, a lot of children's clothing we usually have with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then we can distribute that clothing yeah, yeah, also. Yeah, yeah. I want to do another one in, in Liberia and one in Ghana. Yeah. Ghana, inshallah, will be very, uh, what you call it, uh, successful. Why? If the brothers see the situation, the water, the people drink in Ghana, it's just, you know, uh, you feel, you know, I need to put a borehole up as soon as possible for these people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, okay. So, so uh, uh, Gambia is going to be there all the time. Yeah. But maybe I'll do one in a different country. No, I think I think you're right. You know, in terms of the, all of the, 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 the scenario, the, the way Gambia is able to host the riders and the challenge is perfectly safe. Right? Yeah. So that makes sense. But so just, just to be, just to make it clear for, for people who don't know as well. So this is a bike challenge where you, you basically buy your own bike but yeah. because of the COVID and the, the situation with not being able to ship bikes from the UK the, to over the, here, the, 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 crisis, the, contain, yeah. the transport crisis which happened. Now. Yeah, so you you buy your own bike, and then the, the idea is that when you get to when you get to the school here, the bike is donated to, to the, the school, yeah. and then the school decides which kids are travelling from far, yeah. and they get given it in order to make them be able to come to school as well. On one of my journeys, actually, one reason why I started this bike this thing also is, on one of the journeys when I came here, uh, I told Pa. I said, no, I want to see, I got a data from the, from the head teacher. I said, tell me how many villages the children come from and what's the distance of the villages. So they said one child was coming from, I think, 10 to 12 kilometers. So that morning, I said, pa. So what time did they leave? I mean, 10 to 12 kilometers. Whenever I hear that, yeah, just at the back of my mind, it's like exaggeration. But it's not, right? It's actually 10 to 12 kilometers. The 10 to 12 kilometers. So I, I, I went, wow. I re drove down to that village where the child was coming from early morning after forget and we drove back with the child. So you actually drove and you yeah. know it's 10 to 12 kilometers? Yeah, kilometers. Wow. So then that got me, then we hit this appeal. One is a bike ride, people have some fun, you know what I mean? Experience, different life experience and a lot of people donated their old bikes which we donated to the children also, alhamdulillah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's that's so the, the other part as well is the people that participate, yes. you know, is all funded by them, right? Yeah. None of the money that's collected is is to help with the ride. No, no, the funds collected on the, the thing, what you call it, the the, the the donation platform. Yeah. That goes hundred percent to the donors, uh, to yeah. the part, uh, to the beneficiaries. Yeah. yeah. It will be hundred percent used for the beneficiaries. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's the interesting as well when you say 100% because right? I really want to make clear that 100% because even the zakat money that you collect, right? And this is this, work, this I mean, I didn't appreciate the detail of what you do here, right? Um, and I'm allowed not to appreciate, I'm allowed to, ignore, right? So, so that detail is that no, basically... You're not allowed to be ignorant all the time. I, I, I agree, I agree, but unfortunately, <laughs> yeah, unfortunately where I live and everything here, yeah, it just uh, allows me to do that very easily, yeah, and unknowingly. But um, <clears throat> the zakat, so if you collect a hundred pounds zakat money, right, and in order to get that zakat, you know, in the form of a rice bag and everything, to, to the family, you know, you've got to pay a driver. Right? right, you will not pay the driver from that zakat money. Let me, right? let me give you, let me give you a briefing on that. It costs us to transport the food from where we buy the food to the station where we're going to do the distribution. Yeah, it costs us to hire 
what you call it, uh, labor to offload, load the thing, the food on that side, if the, 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 the shop guy doesn't do it, and offload it on this side here, if we don't get volunteers. Yeah. So we have to pay them also. Then after, sometimes if we haven't got plastic bags, we have to buy the plastic bags to do the packing inside there. All that will not come out from the zakats that people have given. That we use it from now, the, uh, what we call admin, admin cost, which comes out from the gift aid which we collect. Wow. The transportation, the labor cost of loading, offloading, and whatever things are needed. And that's, that's, the, that's the Gambian people as well. It's not, it's, you know, if you don't have volunteers, that's the Gambian people. So you're saying the gift aid goes to the Gambian people as well no, who are helping. You know what, how we look, by, I, I look at it. By, I'd rather not take the work free from them. Some of them, uh, as I said, I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty of things, but uh, I'd rather not take the work free, I'd rather pay them. Yeah. Why? If they're not working or if they're working, they're on a very low wage. If they work for us, for, for uh, three hours, four hours or for a day, and I give them, I mean, according, I'll pay them according to their wages here. Yeah. If somebody is getting paid, say in a local guy's wage is $4,000 or $5,000. I'll divide that by 30. Okay. Or say, let's take it $6,000 each. So I'll divide it by 30, he's getting paid $200 a day. I won't give him 200, I'll give him 300. Yeah. Or I'll give him 400. So then, that is your labor cost now. I'm paying you for your labor. That comes out of the gift aid. Right. And then afterwards, if he's needy, I'll tell him that this, what you can parcel, food parcel, is for you because you need it. It's not what you've done. Yeah. It's not because you worked for me, I'm going to pay you. You know, a lot of them say, that, oh, we'll pay them from there. I say, no, 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 no. Never. You cannot pay them from there. You give them separately. You pay them separately for the labor, and then you pay, you give them, you donate mm -hmm. to them a food parcel, which the brothers and sisters have donated from the UK, or whichever part of the world the donation has come from. You give them because they are needy, they are benefit. Uh, the, 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 the beneficial is needed, that's why we're giving them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And as we speak as well, you know, just to sort of close off as well. <coughs> so, right now we're speaking, okay, we're sitting on this beautiful place, which a lot of us wouldn't have the opportunity to be here. Um, you've got stuff going on in Liberia. Yeah. You're worried, you know, your care and concern is all, is all the way over there and things are happening at this moment in time over there. You're seeing, you're taking time out and, you know, to get your time was really difficult as well. But you're taking time out to do this. Right now, food parcels are being given. Yeah. Okay, and you're still organizing your next trip to Liberia as well. No, no, leave Liberia now. I'm organizing. We've got another 250 parcels which we're going to be giving in uh, Brikama. Yeah. Because we've got uh, the seven of you are going back on Sunday morning. I still got another 13 of, of the brothers left which are going on Tuesday. So yeah. I'm going to do the food parcels, 250 food parcels back in Brikama. Yeah. And then we, our target is between 30 and 50 widows. We're going to give them the SSP project, okay. uh, a business startup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So from a hundred pound to hundred and fifty pound, according to what type of business they're going to do, we will give them hundred pound, hundred and fifty pound to start up some kind of a business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I give you an example. Some of the ladies said they want to do coal. Yeah. Now we found out that a bag of a big bag of coal, 30, 40 kilo bag of coal is costing three hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, yeah. So then <coughs> if we give them say a uh, uh, hundred, uh, hundred and fifty pound. That's about ten thousand dollars. She can get uh, three thousand five hundred. She can get 30 big bags of coal. So 30 big bags of coal is enough for them to, it's not enough, but it's a good startup yeah, yeah, for yeah. them to start some kind of a business. Last longer. Yeah, yeah it, uh, it's true. Because then you have to look at how will they have the place to store it also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you've got 30 bags, 30 bags is quite, it will take quite a huge space. Yeah, so yeah. it's a good... So good it's a case by case, you know, it's a case by case kind case of by, uh, every approach. Case, yeah, it's a case by right, case. So it's not just like, you know, you've got tokens and each one is worth 150 and you yeah. just give, 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 give. You see, no, you the, case the, by the, case. So that's I the go, attention to detail yeah. on the ground yeah. there. Okay. Okay, let's take a pause. I'm going to ask about um, you know, the women's side of things. Yeah. Right. I think um, there's an interest on that. So let's just go into a bit of detail there. But it's got to be mehram, it's got to be both. Huh? No, you say that, you say, yeah, yeah. you say all of that stuff. Because if I got none merums oh, and I got these two youngsters here, yeah, yeah. they'll be, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, yeah. The question is going to be, if you have an application form on your website for yeah. one of your uh, tours, yeah. 
Now, if women apply to that tour, what are they expecting? What is the conditions they're going to be? Yeah. Uh, how how you're going to set that up for women specifically? Yeah. So yes, mahram, uh, other things that women can do. Yeah. Uh, maybe school. You must no, teaching, yeah, skills. teaching and cooking must be inside there. No, anything. Yeah. They have to cook. I sent my sister to that as well. She cursed me, man. I said my sister, like, yeah, I go, yeah, you can come next time, yeah, you can be the cook. She cursed me, bro. The only thing I know smokes. <laughs> Dead? <laughs> yeah. In terms of people that are coming, what skills they have and how they, yeah, those yeah. skills can benefit the locals. Mm -hmm. I I think think that's a good question. Uh, Yusuf, bro. my wife, go, go, <coughs> she's been to Ghana, yeah. and when she goes to Ghana, she, because she's a teacher, so I tell her. We're not, are we in a rush or anything? No, no, no. Are we in a rush or anything? Started. So we're not in a rush, right? No, no, no. Okay. No, she's, she's a teacher. One second, my life. But, you know, I've got a Karen talking, I'm listening, I'm listening here and I think, yeah. is but there any way of walking back, filming? Come. Yeah. So she, can you get uh, that, can you, can you get the equipment while he does it, to, so, to end it up, I'm going to walk back to the food distribution and then we just finish up there. Do you get me? And then Halima, she's also right. teaching you. Three of them came and... Yeah, because I think that would be a good, a good way just to solid like, end it of the school. The, the, you know what I mean? The, yeah. They took the the thing, they, they, everything incest for the teachers, everything for the yeah. teachers. You know when we're walking Proper back here, yeah? don't the, stop yeah, anyone, whatever, right? Just the let teacher, it be completely teacher, natural. Teachers would love it, right? But then you have to come a little extra time. Yeah. Yeah. See, no, no, our, ours is that's a bit of. Well, how, no, no, you decide you know, that because I don't know what the best is. That's your thing, uh, right? Two weeks. Yeah, but I think I think yeah, you're right. You just here, around, you know, just go around wherever, wherever, jam in. No, no, of course, that's what I'm saying. That the computers, for example. Yeah. Now, I can yeah. do that quite easily. <coughs> you haven't got the time. That's the problem is the time. So the skills to do it is... So, so yeah. next time next time we come, uh, the brothers must come. You see now, uh, some of the brothers are like, say for instance, Mongo. He's now, he's got a business to run. And he can't stay that extra long. So he comes, you should be more straight. You guys are, can take holidays. And if you bring your families with, so then you can take that extra two, three days or something, or four days. And then when you come here, you're not rushing. Yeah. But this guy, this time is a bit better because you guys are not rushing like last time. You guys just rushed off. Yeah. You no, no, next year my kids will come Gambia, hundred percent. Yeah. If we can make, we'll make it something happen. And wanna talk about your seeds, agriculture. Smokes, you wanna cover off some like agricultural stuff, that stuff they're growing here. Why don't I bought, what, he bought some. Seeds. No, I bought no that I bought. I bought the seeds for the Ustads. For the Ustads, yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah. But even that, that's a skill that it's not native here because they don't grow certain things here. So some of the. Have you talked about the Ustads who have their come to this country and start settle down? No. Maybe that's another thing that you can. No, we'll do that on the way back. Asif, yeah. you guys are IT guys. Well, like, if you learn agriculture, you got water here. Then is cheap. You yeah. forget your this thing, IT, the amount of money you'll make here, that money you can help 50%, you have the poor 50%, you, you use it for your personal this thing. Yeah. But that, now you've got to relocate that way. Yeah. And now, here to build a beautiful property here, it's going to cost you 25, 30 grand. With all the facilities, you can have your solar, let me say 50 grand. Yeah. You've got your solar panels, you've got your garden, you know, it's, it's, it's a thing. And you got a lovely community. Lovely community. Yeah, definitely. Right. Is it on? What, 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 what is that? What's it? Where did we finish off last bit? Yeah, just the two. We start with the women. The tour again, yeah. Yeah, no, no. So let me go to court tour to finish that off, right? Because then we're jumping. Right. So, so the so the bikes are going to be um, given down here, right? Um, so the money raised, do you, do you find it like um, when you do an event, more money? So obviously when there's a disaster, people give, right? Yeah. Outside of a disaster, it's hard to you, you raise struggle. money. You Are you finding it with these challenges? Um, and is that one of the reasons why you have these challenges? And aside from you know, your, your, your reasons for people to experience and hand deliver, right. Right? aside from that, yeah? you know, do you find that there is more money being raised when you have these challenges? Beautiful question. You set up good learning school, <coughs> uh, we sponsored it. It was a, 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 a caravan village initiative. Caravan supplied all the materials. The village supplied the labor. Yeah. So we put uh, up uh, three classrooms, but it was mud, mud blocks. 
the blocks were made of mud. Yeah, yeah. And the roof. A storm came in one of the in one of the, the seasons, the rainy seasons, and blew the thing down. So this happened in 2013, 12, 13 somewhere. Now we put up a, a appeal for the school, Serakundan School. From 13 till about 18 in five years, we collected I think 5,000 or 6,000 pounds only. Now we cannot use the card for building. From pounds, yeah? You say you, pounds, you, yeah. you made it appeal to so the UK? In five years for that appeal, we only collected about 5,000 pounds. Over how many years? Five years. For the school project. Over five years? Yeah. Now, what I'm saying is, uh, we don't use the cut in the building projects, not at all. It's only from the little money which comes in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So then, I thought now the school, that's where the to uh, another point why the Todi Gambia came in. Hmm. And last year's uh, 19th Todi Gambia was the Serakundaning school to build six classrooms. Oh, so the funds from there were yeah, to, to build a classroom. So yeah. this is where the, the Todi Gambia fundraising event comes in. So you want to get something done, you get it done quicker on, on th th this way here. So in 19, instead of six classrooms, we built 10 classrooms and an office. Hmm. In the Tour de Gambia, because of the Tour de Gambia, yeah. 2019. Yeah. Then yeah. we got solar panels here. You can see it on top here. We, got, we put the solar panels in, in the Serakunda Ning School also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You understand? Yeah, yeah. So that's where it is. So in these type of events, you've got, it's, it's twofold. People enjoy themselves and then the poor benefit from, from their own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think, I think one of the things I noticed as well, right, while cycling through and, you know, through Gambia, up the hills as well, um, it's amazing, you know, seeing the sunrise, uh, you know, the, the, the dust, the dust you, you, through you, the you, sunlight shining through the, you, through you the trees. Some, you put some beautiful pictures yeah, of, it's, of the sunset it's, that day. It's, that um, was amazing, man. I mean, you know, I it's, no, it. it's no longer a screensaver, you know, it's yeah. real, you know, you've seen it yeah. and everything. Okay, but one thing I noticed is why it defined to me as I was traveling, okay, that, that you know, why smiling is considered a charity. Because as I was going, you know, the, you, you see the kids Small from distance, 200 meters, they will notice you yeah. because you, they notice that di they notice there's something different happening, right? Even though it's little cycles going, right, going across, and you see them just shouting Duba. Uh, I don't know, I don't smiling. know, about you. they might think you're a Gambian, maybe, yeah. But, it's like, they say Duba, Duba, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it's like, so it's like amazing from that perspective to, to be able to, to be able to, um, you know, contribute to charity not just from giving money, right? No, not just from oh, riding the cycles. The children love it, man. When you're passing by there, and then if you got some sweets, if you got some sweets in your pocket, and you give them one sweet, oh, oh, oh. yeah, yeah. And then, <coughs> even on the sweets, wherever we stop, they want the bottle, <coughs> that water bottle. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We chuck it away. For them, that water bottle is when they go to school, they fill the, the water or the drink inside there. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so, just going on to like interacting with the local people as well. Um, and I think um, Brother Shifu is going to be bringing us. Sirfo, Sirfo. Sirfo. Yeah. Yeah, he's going to be bringing our tea. Um, he's very meticulous in how he makes his tea as well. I wanted to bring him in just so you could tell us a little bit about him. Um, yeah, just so, uh, just so the people, people understand, I just want people uh, to experience that it's I'm not sorry. just about... You want to just turn it towards Sirfo. So tell us a bit about... S Sirfo is uh, 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 Allah Park, uh, very nice guy. Uh, he's, uh, he's a mute man, deaf and dumb, he can't speak. Married, he's got six children. He stays in Prikama, near brother uh, Pa, his Pa's neighbour. Uh, before he used to, he's a very good knitter. You see this, this hat, he knits yeah. himself. Yeah, he and he used me. to knit them in uh, the Gambian colors and go to the, 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 the tourist area and sell them there. So I'm there. But at the moment, his health is not well. You know what I mean? He's not very well. So uh, he comes to the office with Pa and things like this year. So time to time, we keep on helping him. Like last time I came, he wasn't well, he needed some medication. So I gave him about 30, he said about 30 pounds he did for me. He gave it to him, you know what I mean? So, uh, very nice guy, very honest guy. You know what I mean? Uh, so, this is his four, six children. His one son is studying in the madrasa here. Yeah. yeah. Free of charge. The other five children are going to school. And uh, we helped him with the, 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 uh, for the school fees. We always 
give him some money so he can pay yeah, so I, I, I have to I have to say like you know I, I don't think I've ever interacted and if I was walking on the street and he opposed me as well I'd probably walk around you know, yeah. as much as I'd like not to say that openly but um, I probably would walk around because you don't know you don't know um, guys perfectly well because yeah. you know so you, you're you're your um, your approach to inclusion is amazing, right? Yeah. And that the fact that you know the, how you include them, we're benefiting from that as well, being able to learn from him as well. And what I've learned as well is the people that interact him around him, they talk to him in sign language. Yeah. This is this is a very wanted, desirable skill in London, right? But they talk to him, and being able to witness that and see that is not something that you would see on a tourist. You know, you got anywhere? Yes, right, right. right. Now, as I said, uh, he's a very nice guy. So then, Pa asked me. He says, "Can we bring him on the journey?" I say, "Pa, you don't have to ask. Sirfo is part of us. He's part of the charity. Yeah. He is with us." <coughs> you know, we had another one. We had um, in this school here yeah, in Kuntaur. We had Tunko. Tunko. Yeah, he yeah. was also a, a mute, uh, mute man, deaf and dumb. But the two never used to get on. <laughs> be funny with these two guys, you know. I don't but know. I don't want to argue. We didn't argue. <laughs> Tuko was our security guy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Boy, boy, oh boy. No child can leave the school. Yeah. He says bring letter, and that he also knows if you bring a letter and he says it's not signed properly. Ah, uh -uh, you don't have to go. <laughs> very, very good. Now yeah. when we used to come here, he's always ready to come with us back to Brikama, and he come with us. As long as I stay here, he's with us here, yeah. and then he'll stay at Pa's place for a, for a month, two months, and then he comes back again. Yeah. So, uh, so what's, his, what's his story with tea? Gee? What's his story this with is, tea? Uh, they call it Ataya. It's, uh, I think it's, uh, it's, uh, your origin is from Mauritania, and it's a lot of sugar inside there for the people who drink it. So it, they, they, they brew it, you know what I mean? They keep on brewing it, and then, you, as you can see how they're doing it, yeah, they call yeah. it Ataya. Because he's been doing so that for ages. Our people won't like it because it's very sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's a Chinese tea, and then they keep on brewing this stuff. You know what I mean? Because he's been on the journey with us all the so way now, through. That th tray, th that's one bottle of water, yeah. that that you know, cold um, case as well. He's just been making he's tea and serving us, and yeah, and From very much. Sirfo, just give me. Sirfo, Sirfo. Hey, Sirvo! Hey, 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 hey! Hey, Sirvo! Sirvo! Sirvo, Sirvo, Sirvo! 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 Yeah. I think you said, you know, make him a strong tea, yeah? Yes. <laughs> No, no, I said stay here. Okay. Said, oh, 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 no, 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 no. The other day, in the other village, I said, Sir, you're not coming, you're staying here. Yeah. He went there quickly, he said, I'm taking my phone out, I'm going to phone Pa. <laughs> <laughs> so he says, if I stay here, what about my wife and kids in the, in the, the thing here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sir, yeah. No, that's, a, that's really good, man. So, I mean, I mean, to, to meet these interesting characters, I don't think I would have met in my normal walks of life. Yeah? I would have never met. I mean, in other countries, I would have never met this. But yeah. the, I, I mean, yesterday as well. We made him part of the family. You know what I mean? If he comes, I mean, I don't feel offended why he's coming. Yeah. He wants to come on the journey. But, but you come in, no problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You come in. Bismillah. Now the, the, other, the other thing as well is um, just before just another amazing story that I experienced well and I want you to know about it right um, and you I mean it's probably one of is that I was I noticed two of the children they had they were having a little bit of a misunderstanding you know kids have always have misunderstanding so one was bigger than the younger one so you know who's taking control of this situation let's put it you know let's rephrase it that way so I went over there and I said stop doing that right um, and um, you know, I made one apologize to the other, and I said so. So anyway, the the, the one that was <coughs> um, on the receiving end of the situation, okay. So he was quiet and everything. So I was asking him what his situation and everything, and they go, you know, his mother. I mean, his father passed away three months ago. He just been he just involved three months ago. So that basically my heart sank, right? Um, and he's just, you know, he's obviously adjusting and stuff like that. 
And then ask, what about your mother? He has no mother as well, right? So he was obviously sad, you know, he was basically standing next to me, um, you know, needing that adult um, companionship as well. It was just really sad, right? Um, and so I sat next to him while they were eating, you know, eight in a plate, right? Or no, I mean, six, five or six in a plate, right? And they wouldn't start eating until all six have arrived to that plate. So the next plate is already started because their six have arrived. So I'm just like amazed by this, yeah? It's like, I'm just being, it didn't stop there, yeah? The child then says, yeah, join us to eat. Yeah. Right? There's only two pieces of meat on that table and it's telling me to join him to eat. Okay, and like, you know, little bit of vegetables. So I said, no, I can't, you know, I don't think it's right. Even though I want to, right, I don't think it's right. So they sat there, <coughs> sat there, all sat there and everything. And they ate, they finished the plate, everything, nothing was done. So I was kind of humbled in that situation where they basically just didn't start eating. He was an orphan, you know, um, something that I would never ever, I don't, it's like Oliver Twist, you know, that's the closest I'd get to it. Yeah. So, so you know, thanking you, thanking Allah, you know, you being the means and everything, the, the, the bike challenges, I'd like to say, you know, the, the view is that definitely, all right, the, the challenges, it's not just a challenge, it's an experience of a lifetime. Okay, that you can, yeah, you, you, you take that away and then you basically, that quality of that experience, you're able to share that with others and bring others to it as well. Um, and that, that, you know, the charity is not just about giving, it's about bringing the smile and the way you bring the smile as well is by sharing your time and it helpful with them. Asif, I don't know if you noticed yesterday, when we were entering the village, and the school children came to pick us up. Back, yeah. Back in England, do you think our children, you're walking somewhere or you go to a school, they're all going to come and hold your hand and together? Nothing. Did you see every participant, three children, four children came and they're holding your hand? And if so, another one came to hold your hand, the other one says, no, 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 don't hold his hand. He's my, he's my friend. Yeah. You've noticed that? Huh? No. And they, they felt so happy you hold the hand with them. Yeah, yeah, amazing. You know, amazing. I can't. I, I, I came near Asif uh, to yesterday and I held one of the hands. The other girl said, hey, hey, leave his hand, go to him. This is my friend. You know what I mean? It's, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Seven yeah. year old, eight year old. Yeah, yeah, you can't, you can't beat that as well. One of, the, one of the experiences in previous ones where we've come to Bangladesh, I mean, this is my own experience as well, um, in terms of. A lot of people ask me, you know, can we come? I said, look, everyone gives charity. Everyone gives charity, you know, someone asks for money on the street or whether you donate to any other charity. That's great and, and don't stop doing that. But the experience of being out here and giving charity with your own hands, it, it, it changes your perspective on charity itself. Yeah. You see the beneficiaries face to face and you are handing out and the smile and everything you see around them is then it, it kind of changes you and I think a lot of people on this on this tour is probably the first time they've seen charity with their own hands and I think that's the big difference no, and I think you, 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 you know brother sorry you know brother Saji Chaus we came out to Bangladesh yeah in in 2000 before we went on the journey he went uh, 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 I think six months or, or the Ramzan before he, they came to, four of them came to me in the office and they say, Moran, we want to go to Bangladesh, we want to go do distribution. I said, we've already finished the distribution. Now, there's only about, uh, it was on the 18th of the Ramadan already. Now, they, they collected quite a lot of money, I think 40, 50 grand they collected and they want to go distribution. Now, it's not easy to transfer the money straight away. We've just transferred money to Sunali Bank via Rehan. The money hasn't gone back, it's coming back to the bank. Now we'll have to transfer it to another bank. You understand? So, I phoned Mufti Sab, I said, Mufti Sab, can we get 50,000, 40,000, 50,000 pounds worth of food on, on credit? He said, no problem, give me uh, this thing, a couple of hours, I'll go and uh, 40 grand or 50 grand worth of food on credit, he got it. You've seen it, it comes from the city, it, 45 hour, 45 minute boat ride, it comes to the shore, where the, the thing, I mean, the, the station is, and then two kilometers, you've got to take it to the Madras on rickshaws. Sajid came back, it was France at that time, and they went on these small type of boats. Uh, 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 Hamza. Hamza, just take a picture of that boat there. 
they loaded the food on these type of boats and because of the floods, every house became like a small island. You know when he came back to England, you know what he told me? He said, Morana, I thought I was doing you charity guys a favor. I said, why? He said, I thought I took that 150 pound, 200 pound, 500 pound, 1000 pound and I gave it to you. Oh, I did a very great job. He says, yeah. they had to do over 3000 parcels for two days and nights. Them and the Muslims are kids. They made those parcels. They went on those small type of boats and they did it. He says, listen here, money is the easiest thing in charity to do. To give, yeah. to give money in charity is the easiest thing. To distribute it and get it to the poor, that's the most hardest stuff. And yeah. you guys have seen. Yeah. Okay, if you in England gave me 500 pounds and said, right, give, me, give, it, give it to the poor. You thought, well, Mola has gone and given it to the poor. But now, for me, us to look for to the poor, you know, there's so much of preparation before that. The, the, the detail that goes, it, that is well, involved, that, yeah, yeah. Um, is not, you know, is not appreciated. Exactly. Then we have to go to the shop, guys. By we look for by because it's charity. It's not that I'm just going to. If we said, if we said for, uh, fifty pound for a bag of rice, I'm just going to take it. No, I'm going to go to three shops. If I can get the rice for forty-five pound, I'm going to buy it because I know if I'm going to buy two hundred and fifty bags. 250 times 5 is how much? 1250? Yeah. I can feed so many more families with that. Mm. So that's the way we go around with things, inshallah. Yeah. And that's what I like about, you know, just thing as well, is your level of detail and your, your, your um, closeness to the detail on the ground, yeah. okay, is, um, is, is really appreciated because we get to walk with you. And I think just, you know, like, let's, let's take a walk back here now as well. Yeah. Right. Let's just, just set up quickly as well. Oh, my phone. Yeah. But while we're talking, while we're just getting ready to walk back, what about women? I mean, the women they do want to get involved more as well, right? Definitely. Well, how can they? How can they get? In, how can they get more involved? What will you be? What are you thinking in terms of the services to provide for them? Yeah. Like uh, uh, not uh, services, I'll but keep, as in like, keep, will there be, you know, women hygiene? Is that how they can offer? help towards them. You know, we've got like my mom, my sister and my sister-in-law, they work in schools and everything and they want to get involved as well. Right. Is I'll that how you can bring I'll, the skill I'll, to the problem? I'm going to give you a brief to swing how we can get the ladies involved also. Uh, One second, I just got to put this class. Assalamu alaikum. Mama, korta nate. Sumbole. Baby jay. Inshallah. Inim bara. Alhamdulillah. Doko bedi. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Are you speaking Mandinka? I've learned a little bit, I have to learn by... My motto is learn any language, even in two, three words. Now, uh, my wife, Alhamdulillah, Allah Ta'ala give her Jazakhir, she is uh, a teacher. 2013, I brought her to get Ghana first. That's yeah. when we opened the school. I said, please come and help us, uh, this thing, work on the school. Uh, Of the Ghana school, yeah, and then she did a, a one week of, uh, of what you call it, uh, uh, incest for the teachers and trying to get the administrator side of the school, teach them how to do things. Yeah. And then I took it to Liberia also, then after that, yeah, yeah, from yeah. Ghana. And then in Liberia, also, you took your wife to Liberia, she became close with Liberia, and then I took it, we went right to the Sierra Leone border, wow. and she loved it, you know, the villages and things like that. Then again, in 18, they came in 2014, uh, just before I went on a trip somewhere for distribution and they say they want to go for a holiday. I say, listen, now my, my young daughter, she's a daredevil. You know what I mean? She loves adventure. Yeah. Uh, in seven, they say they want to go for a holiday. They want to go by flight. So by, uh, uh, however she says, dad, no, 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 no. Let's go by car. So we drove down to Spain by car. Yeah. So she likes adventure. So in 14, I took them to, 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 uh, to, to, to Turkey. Yeah, yeah, now, yeah. We do, there's a lot of refugees, we do a lot of work in Turkey. So I said, listen, you guys want to go for a, a holiday? Let's go to Turkey. Let's go to the uh, this thing, the refugees there, all the, Turk, uh, the Syrian refugees. Let's go do food distribution. Let's go interact. Go, uh, you know, spend our Eid with us. So we spent our the family spent the Eid with us. What you call the refugees? We couldn't cross over because it was the, the thing was yeah, closed. Yeah, 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 yeah. But all the villages we got the Syrian refugees on the border of Syria and Turkey, a place called Hate, are from the reality. Alhamdulillah, every day going for food distribution and they loved it, Alhamdulillah. So we spent a week there. So you know, for ladies, for ladies, inshallah, of the Todi Gambia, wife was ready to come, but I told her, listen, it's very hot at the moment. So we, if we're going to do the Todi Gambia for ladies, we need to do it in December and January. 
Yeah, yeah. February time it gets a bit more hotter. Yeah, but you, but in terms of so so there there is a lot of ideas already um, I, I, I've um, cooking I, in your head, yeah, right? Yeah, I've got the ideas. So things like eating. things like eat eat in not like eat over. You know, in Turkey, in the camps, right? Yeah, yeah. Wherever that would be, Syria or wherever. You know, I mean, wherever, in Turkey, yeah. right? Where whichever camp it is, yeah, yeah. right? You've got um, um, women being able to, if their school teachers being able to come to the schools and give a bit of time yeah. during that time. You know, um, help out with just look observing the school and stuff like that as well. Yeah. Um, walking challenges as well. Yeah. So oh, how, my, how, my daughter came up with, uh, with this idea. She yeah. Said, if the, if the men do the bike ride. The, the women, if they can't cycle, at least we can do 10, 15 kilometers yeah, a yeah. walk. So how can they, su how, so, so at the moment you don't have an application or anything like that. How can they submit their interest and their ideas to you so that you can basically, you know, uh, make it into a tangible thing, make it into so a... When, 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 when you get back, get back, the first, my first uh, priority is going to be putting up uh, uh, ca uh, uh, you know, on caravan challenges. Yeah. Caravan, caravanchallenges.co.uk is the website we've got. Yeah. So all these activities, I'm going to put it on there. Yeah. Right. Then uh, the, the, the car rally for December, that's my priority to put it on now. If I start advertising it now, people can start registering and things like this here. And for the ladies also, we'll have to open uh, this thing where design a form, put all the rules, regulations, what is uh, the thing. Uh, and how they can submit the terms and conditions and how they can sell. It will be the same like how we did it. It will go on to our Caravan, Caravan Mercy website, Caravan Challenges website, WhatsApp, this in Facebook and this yeah, 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 yeah. They call the registration for register and then afterwards we contact them yeah, and yeah. give them all the other things. Because it would be good to get like into like a family because the, the kids, you know, they don't get yeah, exposed kids, to this. Kids also, if they bring the kids also, it will be nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that would yeah. be something. So now, now we're just heading out. So this is the school this is the that school, was built. Yeah. 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 Okay, so this is the back part of the school. Yeah. Um, it's such, just such a, such a short walk, right? Um, and myself and um, Ronnie have been to Bangladesh with you as well and now we're experiencing here. But right now, tell us Mark, what's going Mark, on in there. What, the Hajj seal. Huh? So is in Hajj, you've been together with me. Yeah, yeah, and Hajj as well. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so the, from the first time I met you was something like 25 years ago, right, um, in Hajj. But I can't remember that one, Asif. I know, I know. Do you know what I mean? I, I, was, I, was a, I was a quiet boy then, but when I met you, I became a loud person. <laughs> you, you spoiled me, man. Do you know what I mean? But no, so t tell us what's happening now and where we're where we walking well, to. We're just entering into the madrasa now. Because of so much of activity, I mean, you can see the things are drying around, but I try to tell them to keep the place clean. But now the kids have been, you know, it's an eat for them because since uh, your brothers have come and, you know, the, uh, one of the teachers told me yesterday, they're so happy that you've made this activity of the, what do you call it, the, the, the projector. Yeah. Yeah, the yeah projector. they enjoy it. Yeah. They really enjoyed it. And then after the, the thing, you show them some is the thing, uh, Islamic programs, or you did the, the Quran recitation and some of those um, cartoons, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ibn Battuta and things. Yeah. Uh, uh, basic and Islamic and character, Yusuf. Yeah. you know, good character. And then the, 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 the drinks and the biscuits you gave them after that and the sweets, they rubbed it. Yeah, yeah. This is now, Wallahi Lazim, is our children have eat every day in England. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, at, at, I mean, it must be in everybody's houses. But I've got six grandchildren. Well, that sometimes the sweets will lie there. They won't even touch it. You know, they won't even touch it. That sweet lies there. You gave them five sweets, and you gave them the drink and biscuits. Well, that was an eat for them. Eat before eat. The drinks you gave. No one drank it straight away. If you noticed, they had the bottles. Yeah. Pretty much for about several hours. Yeah, yeah, they share, they sip it, and to make sure the experience lasts them as well. Yeah, and and it's not going to end there because tonight we do have we do have the football program for the kids as well. We, you've got the got football kids program. Come. But what's what's going on here right now? Now, uh, uh, inshallah, Sarah Kundanding, uh, I've just told uh, our principal for uh, Bajinka that I want to see uh, show you people because it's holiday. Islamic schools got holiday. Yeah, I want to show you people. How the, the thing, the teaching takes place in the Islamic school, the yeah. environment. You got a, a, the thing, a, 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 a experience of the secular education, but in the Islamic school, how the, the thing, teaching happens. In the afternoon, inshallah, we're going to go in the Hibs class from Asr till Mag Azor to, uh, till Mag Asr. We've got the Hibs class. You will listen to the children res res uh, reciting the Quran. Uh, you know the Kaida, how they do. Then there will be brothers. They've got about four or five half years. 
we will give them a chance to test the children out also inshallah yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. and you gave me a little bit of a breakdown yesterday as well in terms of how the money is allocated as well yeah there's a thing so this food distribution at the moment is is the the zakat money which is about this, 15k this is yeah this is a, a food distribution on there yeah so tell us like who these people are where how far they've come from uh, we, and what you're giving out the, yeah we've got uh, this is uh, the list we've got of eight feeder villages Kuntauri is the main one Eight villages, we've got eight villages here. So we've got, uh, some of them come from four kilometers, some from five kilometers, from six kilometers. That's where they're coming from. Some, uh, some of Wasu, yeah. where we, our, the town where we can buy all our supplies from. Yeah. So that's about two and a half, three kilometers. They come from there. So as, and we are, as I said, criteria, our, in all countries, my main priority is widows and orphans. Because in the Hadith, the Prophet says, whoever puts his hand on an orphan on the day of Qiyamah, he's going to be like this. The two fingers, how the two fingers are, they're going to be like this here. So orphans and poor children, widows, these are, are my priority. I mean, my, yeah. my grandma became a widow at the age of 24 years old. My, my mom never seen, seen her dad. Yeah. My mom never seen her dad. So, and the hadiths of the orphans and the, the, there's a lot of hadiths of helping the poor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the orphans is there. Orphans and poor children. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. the very poor children if you help them inshallah. Yeah. So so you so we we're, we're distributing what are we distributing today? Today we've got uh, uh, 25 kilos of rice. We've got uh, 4 kilos or 5 kilos of sugar, 3 liters of oil, uh, one big tomato turn paste and uh, macaroni, I think okay. one and a half to two kilos of macaroni. Okay, and yeah. the, the reason why you give that is because from the local knowledge, that's what the, that's what the local diet is and that's what lasts that's them as well. That's the local diet. You see, people say you eradicate poverty, you cannot. Yeah. Allah is the creator, in His hand is all power. The, the thing, treasury, the treasures are in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We are His creation. If we can do only a certain amount. Now, poverty cannot be eradicated. You yeah. can help the poor, but to take poverty out, no. Now, we say that we're going to eradicate it. How are you going to do it? There's millions of them, hundreds of millions of them. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Is this is just to put some extra food on the table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, back in England, our people, you know, I get very not offended, I get very disheartened. No, no, no. How much will this food pass? Will it last them for one month? Will it last them for two months? We're giving them 30 pound food parcel, 40 pound food parcel, and we say, will it last for one month? Put our, let's put ourselves in their shoes on our table in the month of Ramadan. How much does one meal cost? How much does one meal cost? Probably more than 30, 40 pounds. You, you uh, as if you and your, your, your crew, you guys go for a meal at a restaurant. How much does that cost? One meal. How much does it cost? A lot more than 40 pounds. A lot more than 40 pounds. Yeah. Now, you know, we say, will it last them one month? Melissa, will it last them one month? I say, no. It doesn't last them one month. It will last, it will help them to put extra food on the table. It lasts them one week, it lasts them two weeks, it lasts them three weeks, it lasts them four weeks. That's up to them. But we're putting a food, extra food on the table to make things a bit more easier for them. Yeah, 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 yeah. So right now as well, we're going to try, the idea is to get, hand out, I mean, the way you've made the food parcels yeah. is to touch about 500 families. Oh yeah, we've got 500 families we target here. It's 500 yeah. families we target here. We're going to go inside, yeah, just, yeah, yeah we're going to go inside and we just think there. So, so we've got our local brothers here. Oh, we've got, we've got all Let's see if we can. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. So yeah, so we've got, just going round, just give us a quick introduction of how we're handling out. And Tala. Thank you.
don't know. But so, Moana, you made, you made these, these sweet macaronis and... Um, all, 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 all our guys made it. Huh? All, 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 all the, the participants, yeah. they packed the food parcels. Yeah, 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 yeah. They made it last night and everything, the food parcels, the macaronis. So, Mohammed is taking yeah, yeah, yeah. Every, the register. Every, every recipient, we have the name there and they have to give a thumbprint or they have to give a sign. Yeah, yeah. That they've received a food parcel. And this is in our data, it says in our data. Anytime the UK authorities ask us, if I understand you've distributed food, uh, what's the proof of it? This is our proof. Media yeah. is the proof and the paperwork is our proof. Yeah. 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 And then, and so, they, so they're going to give the tomatoes out, Mana. So we give the tomatoes out here. Yeah, the tomatoes out here. The oil. And they, they're pulling the oil up here. Yeah. They're doing the oil here. Yeah. Okay. So this is our crew doing it hand by hand. Yeah, yeah. Aliba is there as well, Abdullah. And then this is the rice. And this is the rice. Yeah. And how will they carry it home, like these food no, bags? Now they'll, they'll have their families, they either donkey cart or something of that sort, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they all wait patiently here. Yeah, patiently, that's it. MashaAllah, that's really good news. Jazakallah, Mawana, I know your time is precious no, no, as well. No, 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 and people are trying get, to... Get over with the pressure is going on. Yeah, so I'm going to... I'm gonna start helping out. Yeah, you better. I think you better. I yeah, think I think I better. I'm gonna get kicked out of the back. One of your crew guys is getting. Jazakallah, <laughs> <laughs> man. Okay. You don't bash me. You better watch <laughs> it. <laughs> so as you can see, yeah, everyone's own food parcels. All everyone's donations is being handed out by hand. So we collected it. We basically um, bought the food. We packed the food, um, and now we're also distributing it with. Um, um, by hand as well, so all of your, all of all of all of you are able to see and hear the stories from us as well when we get back about how all of the um, the zakat money, the zakat money is distributed amongst the poor as well. Jazakallah for your time, and inshallah Allah gives us all of the opportunity um, and gives um, um, the opportunity to all guide us in terms of um, bring us here as well um, and experience um, people experience you know, caravan challenges with the African people as well and share our time, health and wealth with them. Asalaamu As Alaikum. Huh? Huh?